Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to be learning our second method of three for solving these systems. So yesterday we talked about graphing, today we're going to be talking about solving by substitution. But before we get into that, I want to talk about types of solutions. So we've already seen the one solution, but we also have two other. So first, we can have a system that has one solution. We can have a system that has no solution, or we can have a s system that has infinitely many solutions. It's kind of similar to chapter one when we were solving equations. We had that same thing that can happen. And so what these look like, one solution, well, we already know that. We can have a system that intersects at a point. And so this would have that one solution. Another one that we can have is no solution. So what that looks like is basically lines that never intersect. And as we learned last time, those are parallel lines. So any times we see a system of equations where they have the same slope, we can immediately tell that's going to be a no solution because they have the same slope because that means that they're parallel. And then infinitely many solutions is kind of weird. Our graph will just look like that. So that means we are graphing, we graph the same line twice. So basically what it comes out to be is that it's actually the same equation that we have. And we'll look at an example of that later on. But today we are going to be learning about substitution. So when I say substitution, that means to replace something with something else. And so when we're using this method, at least one variable must be by itself because we're going to be substituting a value for x or y into the other variable. And so the steps that we're going to follow on the next few videos are basically these four steps. First, step one, we are going to isolate one variable in at least one equation. So that means, say, we want to isolate x, that means y is, or we want to isolate y, so y is by itself, so something like that where one variable is by itself on one side of the equation. Step two, we're going to substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. So what I mean by that, let's say that I had the equation 2x plus 3y equals 4. Well, I know y is equal to x plus 5, so I can substitute that in for y. So I get 2x plus 3 times that x plus 5 now. After that, we're going to substitute my answer from step 2 and solve for the other variable. And then we're going to write our answer as an ordered pair. Because as you recall from yesterday, our solution is really a point on the graph. It's that point where they intersect. So our answer here, even though we're not graphing it, our answer is still going to be that ordered pair because we're telling where both equations cross when we graph. Okay, that's it for this video. You can go ahead and move on to the next few where I go through several different types of examples.